excited to once again be your chairperson. I'm happy to see some familiar faces and I would like to give a special greeting to the schools and students joining us for the first time. I'm sure, like the schools joining us again, you will bring the same levels of confidence and poise as you go head to head in this preliminary round of this televised national secondary schools debate. The 12 schools participating in this season in no particular order are St. Mary's College, La Romaine Secondary School, Bonaire Secondary School, Queen's Royal College, Bishops Anstey and Trinity College East High School, Astra Boys College San Fernando, Marabella South Secondary, Hillview College, El Dorado West Secondary School, Holy Cross College Arima, San Fernando Central Secondary School, and Holy Faith Convent Coover. It is my pleasure to now introduce you to our esteemed judges. Mr. Kijan Haynes, Lead Editor, News Gathering, CNC3. Mr. Mushtaq Mohammed, General Manager, Paria Fuel Trading Company Limited. And Dr. Richard Taylor, Senior Lecturer in Organic Materials, Chemistry at the University of the West Indies. And joining me on stage is our timekeeper, Ms. Jamie Simmons. Debate teams, you are agents of change. Your voices, your perspectives and your passion are reminders of the importance of youth inclusion as we work towards reimagining a future of equity, justice and peace. We are eager to watch each and every one of you shine as your teams compete for the title of Make Your Point National Champion. Before we begin, to our viewers, on February 16th, 2024, all participating schools were invited to draw randomly from our ballot box to determine their topic and their position ahead of this competition. The debate will be conducted as follows. Once invited to do so, the proposition will speak for up to four minutes to present their case. Then the opposition will speak for up to four minutes to present their opening. Both teams will then be given five minutes to confer among themselves before being allowed two minutes each to summarize. The judges will then make their decision to determine which team advances to the quarterfinal stage. The judge's decision is final. Debaters, you are required to speak only when invited to do so at the lectern and stay within your time limit. Our timekeeper will ring the bell once to indicate that you have one minute left to conclude. When your time is up, you will hear the bell ring twice. After which, a continuous ring should you go over the allotted time. Members of the House, while I hope you enjoy this preliminary round, please remain respectful and sensitive to our debaters and judges. I now invite St. Mary's College to the stage. I now invite Marabella South Secondary to the stage. The motion is, is indiscriminate littering in our country due to A, a lack of enforcement of legislation, or B, due to the attitude of some of our citizens towards the environment? Will the proposition speaker, Zaya Alexander of St. Mary's College, please take the floor. Good morning, everyone, members of the audience, esteemed judges, or worthy opponents. I am Zaya Alexander, and I come before you today as the first proposition speaker to re represent the motion at hand being, is indiscriminate littering in our country due to the lack of enforcement of legislation. We, as a proposition, undoubtedly agree with this motion. To begin, I'd like to firstly define what is litter. Now, I paraphrase it a bit, but I can be general essence of it. According to the Ministry of Attorney General and Legal Affairs, liquid sorry, litter encompasses any solid or liquid material, including but not limited to tins, logs, derelict vehicles, paper, glass, food, debris, waste, both human and animal, and any other designated product. Blaise Pascal, a scientist and philosopher, once said, 
Justice without force is powerless, and force without justice is tyrannical. In alignment with this ideology, I would like to open to my first point, being how a lack of enforcement would only worsen the issue on hand. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to put this into perspective with the use of an analogy. Take, for instance, a baby takes a cookie from the cookie jar and gets away with it scot-free. Then they'd be more inclined to do it again. And we'll see why not. I think any of us here would be more inclined to get a free cookie. But with the use of this logic, if someone were to be walking through the she support is being and drop a plastic bottle and get away with it without encountering any legal consequences, then they'd also be more inclined to do it again. And this, my friends, is the reality of the situation today. Now, the opposition may state that this is simply the mindset of the people of Trinidad and Tobago. Talk about, oh, it's just one bottle. It wouldn't cause any harm to the environment, whispered and echo with the voices of thousands and even millions of other bottles swimming around in our dreams and oceans today. While yes, we as a proposition do acknowledge the existence of this mindset, I challenge everybody in the house today with this question, where does it stem from? See, according to the 2004 Green Industry Association of Western Australia, Regional Assessment 3A, for the small island subsystem, Solid waste management receives low priority when compared to other national needs. I'll let that sink in for a bit. This study speaks volumes in terms of the degree of seriousness governments and leaders have had towards the situation of litter. And who exactly enforces these laws? Exactly. See, in an ideal world where Trinidad and Tobago treats their litter law as seriously as it needs to be, potential offenders will be deterred when they witness the consequences of those before them. If we manage to effectively instill this mindset of deterrence concerning litter law in our country, we could alleviate the vast majority of improper waste disposal. And we, the proposition, firmly believe that the way to go about this is by carrying out and appropriately delivering justice to those who do not abide by the laws of our land. Enforcing the law is the solution, and this would resonate within the minds of those who would be less incentivized to litter, seeing as there be actual dire consequences of doing so. I'd like to touch on how proper enforcement of the litter law would positively impact our society. A proper system would entail ways of identifying and applying appropriate resolution methods promptly. That's a key with there, ladies and gentlemen. Knowing that there's a well-functioning system that has immediate repercussions in a place for already... I thank you all for listening. Will the opposition speaker, Shael Charles of Marabella South Secondary, please take the floor. Mother Earth is dying. We need to stop the pollution. Mother Earth is crying. We need to change our attitude and stop the indiscriminate littering of our environment. Good morning to the honorable judges, the audience, and my worthy opponents. My name is Shia Charles of Marbella South Secondary. Today, my opponents just now gave us a fabricated truth that it's due to lack of law enforcement. But we are here to tell you the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth that is due to the people's attitude that there is garbage on the beaches, in parks, and on the ground next to Urban with the sign saying, don't litter or you will be fine. Hmm. According to Petty et al, an attitude is an assessment of ourselves, other people, ideas, and objects. Psychologists have examined attitudes through the ABC, affective for feeling, behavior for action, and cognitive for thinking. And here we have negative feelings and inadequate knowledge resulting in these undesirable behaviors. Let's discuss knowledge, the cognitive side. We all know the saying, education is power. And we believe that if we educate our citizens about the effects of littering the environment, about proper disposal, there will be a positive change and therefore no more clogged drains or rivers which can lead to flooding. We further encourage just of the days of bits of papers that this lesson, that this lesson to, is taught at a 
uh, start at an early age, train the child and the weight must grow. And of course, this can lead to love for environment that my colleague, Katia Scott, will now further speak on. Mother Earth is dying. Does that statement create any type of feeling? Behavior, our attitude towards littering and the environmental link to our blatant disregard for the environment, in fact, with swim call, will agree after the 1980s Charlie campaign, which will because, and I quote, no one will want to be labeled a Charlie, not even you. This campaign caused a positive change as everyone began looking out for the environment. Positive feeling would develop, however, over 40 years ago. So many young persons were unaware you were not born 40 years ago. Now, laws are good. We agree that they need to be enforced. But we do not agree that it will stop littering that exists. Are the laws being enforced with regards to the crime in Trinidad and Tobago? Yes, they are. So I'm guessing there is no crime. <laughs> Clearly, punishments and fines do not work. Many studies have described that the result of punishment as temporary. Famous Terry Skinner says in his book, Beyond Freedom and Dignity, stated, punish punitive consequences are withdrawn. Example, if you get punished, would that punishment change your attitude? But as I will say, the police can police everyone. For change, for Mother Earth to stop dying, we need to change our attitude, respect to indiscriminate littering of our environment in Trinidad and Tobago. I now rest my case. Both teams will now have five minutes to confer. And to you, our viewing audience, we take a short break. Please do stay with us. It's been five years since Paria Fuel Trading Company Limited, Paria, began its journey as a subsidiary of Trinidad Petroleum Holdings Limited. As we celebrate our five-year anniversary, we reflect on all the highs, lows, challenges, and accomplishments. Paria has contributed to the local economy through job creation, high revenue, providing a reliable supply of fuel, corporate taxes, and community programs. We are grateful for our employees, contractors, and loyal customers who have helped us reach this milestone. We are Paria, celebrating five years, the passion and energy to make a difference. Children need supervision while on the internet. It is a very useful tool in today's modern world. It can be used in a variety of ways to enhance a child's education, as well as for fun activities such as games and reading. However, the internet can also be a very unsafe place with content that is inappropriate for children. Many dangerous situations can occur, such as children being lured by predators. Use filters or block websites to make the internet safe in your home and establish family rules for internet usage. Child protection is everybody's business. It's March Madness at Standard. Get $100 cash back for every $1,000 you spend with same-day financing available. Standard, never beaten on quality and price. you just love a cup of Tetley tea right now? Dark, strong British blend to give you a good morning boost. Or Tetley decaf, all of the antioxidants, none of the caffeine. Losing weight or staying healthy your thing? Try Tetley green tea. Get the vitamins to boost your health with Tetley super teas. Or calm down with Tetley carbamyl. Wouldn't you just love a cup of Tetley tea right now? Tetley, a tea for everyone. Love the flavors you get with Tetley, with Tetley. Tea for everyone. Tea. Distributed by Amco, a subsidiary of Anza Macau. Period nights don't have to look like this. Move less, wake up to change. So change for a real night's sleep with Always Overnight. Its three times protection system absorbs, locks the fluid, and keeps it away from your skin. For protected nights without leaks. Always. <laughs> 
Lotus brings you quality ingredients to help your culinary adventures. Lotus all-purpose flour for all your baking needs. Lotus baker's flour for breads, pizzas, roti and pows. Lotus cake flour for lighter cakes, muffins, biscuits and pastries. Lotus whole wheat flour for the health conscious wanting more fiber. Lotus cassava and wheat flour, an exceptional blend of natural cassava and wheat flour adding a mild flavor to your baked goods. Create your good food moments today. Lotus, the confidence to create. It's March Madness at Standard. Get $100 cash back for every $1,000 you spend with same-day financing available. Standard, never beaten on quality and price. This is Make Your Point Season 2. Both teams have now had five minutes to confer and are ready for the rebuttal. Once again, the motion is, is indiscriminate littering in our country due to A, a lack of enforcement of legislation, or B, due to the lack of attitude of our citizens towards the environment? Will the proposition summary speaker, Joshua Cummings of St. Mary's College, please take the floor. My name is Joshua Cummings and I am here to restate and reinforce the points made by my first proposition speaker and rebuttal against the opposition's points. Firstly, we would like to ask that your argument was about the attitude, but this attitude of our citizens to pollution and littering stems from the government not putting enough focus and emphasis on how serious of a matter this is. And we would like to also add that, yes, you stated there are signs saying do not litter and proper ways of disposal, but there are also speed limit signs. However, we still need officers there to implement these laws. And that is why we believe that the enforcement of our legislation that we would have created is the main reason and main factor towards reducing our littering amount. And as you would now learn, Trinidad and Tobago ranks first in the world in, in waste, in solid waste produced in second is Kuwait, and they produce 5.9 kilograms a day. Trinidad and Tobago produces 150% more. And this is a study that was done by the World Bank and produced by our very own guardianmedia.co.tt. In addition to that, we would also like to ask our opposition, who is responsible for educating the people in terms of littering, as you would have stated, that lessons need to be taught to the younger children. But those lessons and that education comes from our government, who needs to put more emphasis on that matter. And finally, I would just like to touch on the fact that our country has created this legislation, and we cannot trust our own government to enforce it effectively and make a cleaner environment for ourselves. Because yes, we do agree with you guys, Mother Earth is dying, but it is the fault of our government who cannot enforce our legislation that was created. Thank you for listening. Will the opposition summary speaker, Zeke Ausuri of Marabella South Secondary, please take the floor. Hello, my name is Zeke Ausuri. The proposition asks, where does it stem from? What do you mean, where does it stem from? It stems from the people's attitude and mindset. And my colleague Shia stated that there's even trash next to the bin. So tell me, what does the organization really do? In summary, our position is that Mother Earth is shedding tears because some of our citizens are not capable to kick out the littering mentality that they have. Attitudes towards littering and the environment shape our actions. Did you know that? With the proper education and proper disposal methods, this can be prevented. Education is a crucial 
crucial fact when it comes to fostering responsible environmental behavior. We have brought to you Sli Swim Co's Charlie campaign event from the 1980s. And yes, it scared folks into picking up after themselves for a hot minute, but what now? Is in the trash back with vengeance? Even with the laws in place, we are still drowning in trash. We are still living in garbage. Ladies and gentlemen, it is like we need a reality check and stat that the littering, that the mess that we see all over, it is because of the people's attitude towards the environment. Thank you. This concludes the first of our three rounds in this preliminary round episode. Judges, your feedback. For me, I, uh, the feedback is simply this. You started to, on some good principles related to the law and enforcement. What was clear was good examples for where people had similar problems. Over the world, I guess, there would be countries that had similar problems. And they may have used a strategy of enforcement to improve and you know, if a few examples like that would have given your argument a lot more power. I have to believe what you are selling me. I didn't get that confidence in what you were saying. And there was even a point where I found myself having to go back to me. What is the topic again? Because I wasn't getting that. Um, in terms of what are the, the current laws, I didn't get that. I didn't get what were the fines are the fines too low are they too high because if a fine is low then anybody can just pay it and go about their business uh, so those are some of the examples that i was looking for in your presentation marabella south all the flair all the drama, drama in the world that switch had us confused and it was very interesting in a debate where you're talking about would you do something if there were no rules there are no rules about you all switching. So I realized that you all just took advantage of it and switched out. It was very, a very interesting strategy. But I do also love the Charlie campaign. It was a great, um, that was going on in the 80s when I was you know, now growing up and, I, and it resonated with me. And those are some of the good examples that we like to hear. Yes, so I would um, concur with the points about um, delivery. I, I do think though, that when one is delivering, especially if you're delivering enthusiastically, that you have to be very mindful about um, diction and enunciation and pronunciation. So whilst that, that flair and that enthusiasm is good and necessary, um, I think you have to be very careful about not ruining that by not being very clear and, and, and also enunciating uh, clearly what you're trying to say. Thank you, judges, and congratulations to both teams. We now take another short break, and when we return, it's our second head-to-head. -head. La Romaine Secondary School versus Hillview College. For every $300 spent at Passage Deep Food King and Bright Ideas, grab your entry form and get ready to make a splash at Harry's Water Park with weekly winners beginning February 10th. That's right. Get the chance to win one of 50 tickets from Family of Five to Harry's Water Park. Your ticket to fun is just a purchase away. Let the adventures begin. But hurry, promotion ends April 12, 2024, and it's NLCB approved. It's March Madness at Standard. Get $100 cash back for every $1,000 you spend with same-day financing available. Standard, never beaten on quality and price. 
Welcome to ABC Doors and Windows, TNT's number one destination for the best quality and widest variety of doors and windows. Enhance your space with our premium wooden, steel panels, fiberglass, and steel security doors. Complemented by our aluminum, UPVC, and steel windows. Shop for the best quality and service at ABC Doors and Windows. Visit our impressive showroom at 1 Chanka Trace, El Socorro South, or call 638-7184 to get started. Trust ABC for a better choice. Did the holiday spending put a dent in your cash? Well, hear what? Top up your pocket in the Cash Splash promotion. Win over $200,000, including over $65,000 in our weekly draws. Well, hear what to do. Grab any cold, cold, turbo energy drink, fruta, cool kids, viva, or oasis water. Then visit Facebook or Instagram at cold, cold Caribbean or fruta fruit juice official for more details. Let's top up your pocket with the Cash Splash promotion. Step out in trendy eyewear. Two complete pairs of single vision eyewear for $5.95. Upgrade to designer frames with progressive transition lenses for $15.99 or buy focus and transition lenses for $12.99. Stylish eye care that won't break the bank. Visit us at Seaview Optical. Prostate cancer, the number one cancer in men. But there is good news. The PSMA PET scan is now available in Trinidad and Tobago. The only scan specific for prostate cancer, and now the gold standard worldwide. This scan, along with a biopsy, is absolutely necessary, not only for proper diagnosis, but to make sure there is no spread, or to see exactly where there is spread, and if you're undergoing treatment, to make sure that your treatment is working. If you have prostate cancer, tell your doctor you want a PSMA prostate scan. When it comes to cancer, a PET scan gives the answer. Call us for a free consultation. And now, CNC3 is pleased to donate $2,000 to each patient towards their PSMA prostate PET scan. It's March Madness at Standard. Get $100 cash back for every $1,000 you spend with same-day financing available. Standard, never beaten on quality and price. Welcome back to Make Your Point, Season 2. Will the proposition speaker, Christopher Davis of La Romaine Secondary School, please take the floor. Ladies, gentlemen, fellow students, we on this side respectfully propose a fixed term limit for prime ministers in Trinidad and Tobago. In doing so, let me take you to the political system of China where there are no such term limits. This has resulted in a concentration of power in the hands of the leader and has led to violent and deadly protests by citizens, such as the Tiananmen Square protest of 1989. Unfortunately, there are many such examples throughout the world where unfettered political power has led to the disenfranchisement of citizens. Conversely, Term limits for a country's political leader foster a healthy and progressive political environment, give young persons the opportunity to aspire to be future leaders, and allow citizens to choose new leaders whilst holding them accountable through elections. Ladies, gentlemen, and fellow students, I propose firstly that political term limits are imperative in modern, and in modern democratic systems for fostering a healthy and progressive political environment where governmental representatives and opposing groups may exchange their ideas without fear of persecution, victimization, and even death. Many countries throughout the world espouse this system. As right here in the Caribbean, Barbados has two term limits for their prime minister. Is it therefore surprising that Transparency International Corruption Perception Index places Barbados at a lower level of corruption within the Caribbean, much lower than our very own Trinidad and Tobago, which has no such term limits for their prime minister? Friends, my second point is that term limits give young persons within the country an opportunity to aspire to be future leaders. I emphatically state that term leaders facilitate leadership succession by providing opportunities for the emergence of new leaders within political parties. This, pre this prevents stagnation and promotes diversity in leadership. 
Additionally, limiting the time and power reduces the risk as of corruption as leaders are less likely to partake in illicit practices. My third point is that term limits ensure regular turnover in leadership, allowing citizens to choose new leaders whilst holding them accountable in, in elections. This is a hard-earned right of citizens and implementing term limits for presidents or prime ministers, as the case may be, is a surefire way of preserving the right that our forefathers worked so hard for to achieve. In conclusion, I want to urge you to not become so complacent of our, of our political heritage as it may be the demise of democracy. To reinforce my team's position, term limits for our country's political leaders foster a healthy and progressive governmental environment, gives young persons the opportunity to aspire to be future leaders, and allows citizens to choose new leaders whilst holding them accountable through elections. Thank you. Will the opposition speaker, Kavish Prasad of Hillview College, please take the floor. Madam Chairperson, esteemed judges and my fellow colleagues, good morning. I'd like you to imagine a nation, a ship if you will, embarking on a perilous journey. A journey through the turbulent seas of economic uncertainty, social upheaval and global challenges. Now picture at its helm a seasoned captain, one who knows the waters, who has weathered the storms, and who steers with a steady hand born of experience. Today, we stand at a crossroads, debating whether we should cast aside that captain prematurely, or to trust in their wisdom and allow them to navigate us through waves of uncertainty, unhindered by arbitrary term limits. According to an article by ttparliament.org, Trinidad subscribes to the Westminster model of democracy, wherein each political party internally vets and then elects their leader. After that, that leader still has to be elected as an MP, and then their party must win the majority seats. And our nation is a representative democracy, and clearly, we the people are responsible for choosing who we would like to represent us at every turn. To impose a term limit on the choice of the people would be to stifle the voice of the people. And ultimately, ladies and gentlemen, the voice of the people is the voice of God. The proponents of this motion would lead you to believe that term limits would address corruption and abuse of power. However, using term limits to prevent the, the, such wide array of issues is like mopping a floor without fixing a burst pipe. Where is the sense? Checks and balances already exist within our society to stamp out corruption in leaders. I refer to the vote of no confidence, wherein, in the failed 2015 instance, where Dr. Keith Rowley held the vote against the then PM, the Honorable Kamala Prasad Bisasa. Why should we implement blanket term limits when we can utilize our financial intelligence unit to curb corruption, similar to our CARICOM neighbor, St. Martin? Their FIU recently arrested Member of Parliament Ronaldo Brisson on charges of bribery in a crackdown. If St. Martin can crack down on corruption using the same police unit that we are equipped with, then why should we, proverbially speaking, put a band-aid on a gaping wound? And as my proponents, as the proponents highlighted, the term limit most frequently used around the world is two terms, which in Trinidad's case is 10 years. So let's take a look at World Bank data over a 10-year period, 2012 to 2022. Trinidad only experienced a growth of 3 billion US dollars. However, in a 20-year period, we experienced a growth of 19 billion US dollars. Mahatma Gandhi famously said, be the change you wish to see in the world. But how can we expect our leaders to be that change if we don't give them sufficient time? 10 years is not enough. If the people decide that their leader should be re-elected, then that is our choice. 
And lastly, the proponents would lead you to believe that as leaders hold office and their age controls their judgment, that they'd become unfit. However, according to the Elections and Boundary Committee, no person is eligible if deemed mentally ill. So we can build on these requirements and ensure our leaders are competent. And as I conclude, let me leave you with a question. By show of hands, who wants to strengthen our elections by implementing these simple strategies instead of blanket and frankly useless term limits? You know the proposition? They don't like a strong democracy. Some food for thought, Talia. Thank you very much. Both teams now have five minutes to confer. And to you, our viewing audience, we take a short break. We'll see you after the break to conclude this intriguing session. This is Make Your Point, season two. Both teams have now had five minutes to confer and are ready for their summaries. Will the proposition summary speaker, Ambika Sobi of La Romaine Secondary School, please take the floor. You have heard my worthy opponent say that prime ministers may require time to gain the experience and expertise necessary to effectively lead their government. Political systems that have term limits embrace those who wish to serve as they may be used in different capacities, as advisors and consultants and the like. We know too that the former president of Guyana is now serving his country in a lesser capacity and showing great statesmanship as he performed his new role. Fellow citizens, let me remind you that the threat of authoritarianism in the absence of term limits for political leaders is real. Dictatorships, pseudo-dictatorships, pseudo-democracy, and creeping dictatorships. Think about these two political leaders, Vladimir Putin and Robert Mugabe, and the destruction they brought on their countries. Let me remind you of that famous quote by Lord Acton, Power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. I prefer that even Lord Acton himself would have been in favor of term limits for political leaders. He would have been in support for fostering healthy and progressive political environments, giving young persons the opportunity to aspire to be future leaders and allowing citizens to choose new leaders and hold them accountable through elections. How would you feel if you didn't have a commendable leader? I thank you. Will the opposition summary speaker, Sanjeev Joseph of Hillview College, please take the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, a moment of silence for the people who will have to suffer through a corrupt prime minister before a term limit takes action. A moment of silence for the people that would be stripped of a competent prime minister, a competent captain who they have full confidence in. And another moment of silence for the people that would have to suffer through a lack of future thinking because a term limit is only short term, literally and figuratively. Sadly, this is the future that citizens face if term limits are imposed. Term limits do not directly address corruption and authoritarianism, but simply put a time on it. Elections in China are controlled by the CCP, similar to Russia, where Trinidad are controlled by the independent EBC. Furthermore, the proponents might be using the good old tactic if you can't convince them, confuse them. China is a communist country, whereas we are a democratic country. The idea that term limits allow for fresh and new beliefs and ideologies is small-minded as it ignores the fact that we vote for a party and said party leader can become prime minister if they win election. Therefore, the beliefs and ideologies as representative of the party and vice versa. Therefore, the beliefs, oh, sorry, one that has, term limits does not give the country a new set of ideas, but rather an inexperienced leader, one that has not been seasoned with time to the service of multiple terms. Additionally, if the people, the voice of God, choose to re-elect a prime minister, it is their choice as we are a representative democracy and we choose who we want to represent us. 
If the people want them to bust out, they go bust out. For food, food for thought. What if we currently have a prime minister who's coming to the end of their term? One who has served well and greatly improved our quality of life. Like a beacon in the storm, then the invaluable experience they would bring to the table stands as a guiding light. Thank you. This concludes the second of three head-to-heads in our preliminary round one. Judges, your feedback. Um, I think overall, um, both opening speakers actually did a very good job with respect to bringing, bringing across their points. I thought that they were very articulate. Um, and I, I liked, for example, the structure of your uh, text. I think that was very good. Um, it showed really good coherent thinking. And um, I think that should be commended. Um, I think, though, uh, you know, there were some very good points made and some good references made by both teams. Um, I liked the fact that uh, I think one team, though, uh, made more reference to the Trinidadian context more than the other. Um, in particular, the, the opposition team uh, really described well what the um, what the uh, our parliamentary system and really that being the foundation to your argument i thought that was a very good approach a good good strategy to to to, to use to establish your your perspective for the proposition I, I think it started off on a strategy of leadership succession and diversity that of and diversity leadership that i felt should have flowed more true to the rebuttal and and reinforce it and I thought there was the opportunity to use a little more expert opinions and academic references, you know, that allowed, you know, give stronger credibility to leadership succession and diversity. And this is for both teams. I thought neither team kind linked to economic performance or country performance that would have strength in the debate on either side, leadership succession or continuance, right? For the opposition team, Again, I thought initially, I was a little bit unclear on what was the strategy, whether it was choice of the people or checks and balances in the system, right? So one of the things I would say is be clear on what your underpinning argument is. I'd have to agree with uh, both of my colleagues here because this was, this was theater. Like this was good, this was fun to watch Edgy's seat. I may have had an opinion going into this, and that opinion may have changed at the end of it. So that was a great job by both of you. Uh, I will say that the proposition speakers were a lot stronger than the summary speakers. I feel like if you are you're bringing up the anchor leg of the race, so you would have heard what the others would have said. So build on what the people said before you and use that to either strengthen your argument or attack your opponent's argument. So make sure that you were listening and use that in your, in your presentation against your opponent and for your team. Um, we of course now have to check the rules again for the use of props, but it was again, all part of, all part of the show. Like this is people are watching on TV. They will, they will enjoy it. So good job there. Um, I realize, I'm surprised nobody used the example of probably the most famous uh, democracy of term limits, the US, uh, whether or not it's working for them, whether it's better. I do like the use of um, noticing that young people need a chance. It's something I feel very strongly about, but overall, really good job by both teams. Thank you, judges, and congratulations to both teams. We take another short break, and when we return, it's our third and final head-to-head -head for this preliminary round one episode. Bonaire Secondary School versus El Dorado West Secondary School. It's been five years since Paria Fuel Trading Company Limited, Paria, began its journey as a subsidiary of Trinidad Petroleum Holdings Limited. As we celebrate our five-year anniversary, we reflect on all the highs, lows, challenges, and accomplishments. Paria has contributed to the local economy through job creation, high revenue, providing a reliable supply of fuel, corporate taxes, and community programs. We are grateful for our employees, contractors, and loyal customers who have helped us reach this milestone. We are Paria, celebrating five years, the passion and energy to make a difference. He hit me. Will CG United cover this? Don't worry. Remember when I was in that competitive arm wrestling circuit? Ah! Three-time champion, baby. I did feel bad crushing all those arms. 
tangerines. So I took them all out for ice cream. And then we got crushed. Anyway, CG United handled my claims fast. That explains the arm. The best cover for the best value. CG United. Good like that. It's March Madness at Standard. Get $100 cash back for every $1,000 you spend with same-day financing available. Standard, never beaten on quality and price. Time for a little twist. Twist flavored juice drink loaded with vitamin C. Now available in flavors orange, cherry, apple, cranberry, lemonade, and pink grapefruit. Available nationwide. What's life without a little twist? Manufactured by Brava International and distributed by West Indian Traders. Jimmy Abood will pay your VAT until Good Friday. Take 12.5% off any item. No exceptions at our Port of Spain and Barataria locations. From now until Good Friday, Jimmy Abood pays your VAT on any purchase. The 2024 dry season is upon us, and with that expectation, harsh dry conditions, and in the face of rising global temperatures, we must all do our part to conserve our water use. At the Water and Sewerage Authority, we applaud the efforts made by citizens in 2023 to conserve water and value every drop. How can you get involved? By employing simple water conservation techniques at home. Here are some tips. Close the tap when brushing your teeth and washing dishes. Use a bucket instead of a hose when washing your vehicles and driveways. Repair leaks in toilets and overflowing water tanks. Use your washing machine for full loads only. Also, use the value every drop hashtag in your social media posts showing how you conserve our precious resource. Join the movement as we value every drop. It's March Madness at Standard. Get $100 cash back for every $1,000 you spend with same-day financing available. Standard, never beaten on quality and price. Welcome back. This is Make Your Point Season 2. The proposition speaker, Matthew Hurst of Bonaire Secondary School, please take the floor. Good morning to the chairperson, judges, ladies and gentlemen. Trinidad and Tobago is a land that has a natural beauty to it and has many cultural wonders. But returning to the question of who should be the protector of these treasures is a crucial one. Should this tremendous responsibility be left to the private sectors or the government sectors? This decision is very important because it won't only impact our tourism industry, but also our cultural heritage and economic growth as a country. Ladies and gentlemen, why should Trinidad and Tobago's tourist sites be run by corporate and private entities? Well, private control for our nation's tourist sites brings prospects of innovative investment and most definitely higher visitor experiences. Because there is a certain level of pride and cleanliness that is practiced during the maintenance of these sites. Ladies and gentlemen, Private entities have the know-how in terms of marketing our tourist sites to their full potential. Ladies and gentlemen, supporters of private sectors argue that companies bring expertise, new innovative ideas, and financial resources to our tourist sites. There are studies done by the World Tourism Organization which have shown that privately managed sites in developing countries have seen a significant 20% increase in the number of tourists compared to the government-run sites. Also, it is a fact that private sectors contribute an overall higher amount of the country's tourism GDP than the government. This is because they directly cater more to the need of tourists. Sorry about that. This trend has been observed not only in Trinidad and Tobago, 
but also in other countries, spanning years and years. In fact, the amount of money contributed to Trinidad and Tobago by tourism is 4.7% of our GDP. Ladies and gentlemen, this information clearly shows that privately run businesses clearly attract more tourists. However, government management supporters emphasize public welfare and long-term planning, arguing that it ensures access for everyone and prioritizes sustainable practices to preserve the environment and cultural heritage. Ladies and gentlemen, take this into consideration. How often do you see a government official in a government-run tourist site? Unless it's for an opening or for a speech? The answer is likely not very often. Ladies and gentlemen, this raises concerns about the level of commitment and engagement from those responsible for managing these sites. If those overseeing these locations don't show interest, why should tourists? Ladies and gentlemen, as we weigh these arguments, let us try to remember the impact of our decision. This decision will not only affect our economy, but it would also shape the legacy we leave for future generations. Thank you. Will the opposition speaker, Jalisha Richard of El Dorado West Secondary School, please take the floor. Respected Chair, Honorable judges, ladies and gentlemen, greetings and salutations. The opposition is tasked with proving to you that tourist sites should not be exclusively run by corporate TNT. Strategy is to the tourism sector what sheet music is to an orchestra, and the government is the conductor. Without its direction, your listening experience will be less than desirable. Thank you for your service. If our national heritage tourism sites are left at the mercy of private enterprise in Trinidad and Tobago, bet your bottom dollar mass unemployment in the tourism sector will occur. In an attempt to streamline costs, private corpor corporations will not hesitate to fire employees in order to become profitable. There will be no concern for loyalty or dedicated long-term service. Furthermore, if any employees were to be retained, they may, almost certainly receive a downgrade in their salaries and reduce benefits all for the sake of profit. This will obviously have a negative impact on families and the economy. No more Nemo. If tourist sites were to be monopolized by private enterprise, tourist sites like the Bonacord Lagoon and No Man's Land in Tobago would be devastated. Right now, there's a proliferation of unwanted food vendors setting up shop on no man's land, leaving this piece of paradise littered with garbage. Our once beautiful natural treasure, the Boko Reef, is in shambles because of profiteering by private boat operators. Without government involvement and regulation, preservation of our, of our natural heritage sites will take a backseat to the almighty dollar. Shocks and potholes. Managing and maintaining tourist sites requires significant capital investment. The Ministry of Tourism, which represents the government, is allocated funding for management and maintenance of these sites. Private corporations may not have the necessary funding to properly maintain and manage these sites. As a result, potential tourists may seek their Caribbean getaway in alternative islands. Why go to a rundown, dilapidated hotel in Tobago when you can visit a lavish resort in Jamaica? Furthermore, private enterprise may not be able to withstand economic shocks and recession, especially in the long term. Remember the COVID-19 pandemic? According to the Tobago Tourism and Hotel Association, the Tobago House of Assembly had to bail out no less than five hotels, including Grafton Beach Hotel, during the pandemic. Without the government's intervention, these hotels would be out of business. Side by side we stand. Respected audience, I am sure that we all love this beautiful Twin Isle Republic. I ain't too sure about the proposition, but I can definitely say that I am Trini to the bone, Trini to the bone. How unfortunate would it be that average citizens can be deprived of enjoying the natural, beautiful heritage of my own homeland. 
How sad would it be that my fellow Trinis can be priced out of enjoying a bacon shark on Maracas Beach, or have to take a 50 US boat trip to get to the Gaspari Caves? In search of profit, private companies will no doubt seek to increase prices to ensure profitability, which will unfortunately be out of reach for many to be in Trinbagonians. However, through government subsidies, the cost of visit and enjoy these tourist attractions can be made more affordable for everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, without the guidance of the conductor, even the best orchestra will falter and collapse, and no one wants to listen to Trun Together Noise. I thank you. Both teams, you now have five minutes to confer. And to our viewing audience, we'll see you after the break. Season 2. Both teams have now had five minutes to confer and are ready to summarize. Will the proposition speaker to summarize, Rohan Laltu of Bonaire Secondary School, please take the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, the opposition takes the floor and they talk about private sectors not having the funding to fund our nation's tourist sites. However, the government doesn't have the funding either. Let's take a look at our nation's healthcare system, which is dangerously under-equipped. I come from a government school, and I can tell you that we are understaffed and under-equipped, ladies and gentlemen. All these dignitaries, senators, ministers, and even the prime minister, runs to Acer Right Center on a regular basis. But why? Well, it's because they know it's not some third-class government-owned establishment. They know customer service is tops, and the environment is safe, clean, and well-maintained, unlike the rest of our dilapidated government-owned nation. Government officials will never seek medical attention at a public health facility, and that's because they don't trust themselves and the public health system which they themselves uphold. If they can't trust themselves, then why should we trust them with our nation's treasures? Ladies and gentlemen, we need to bear in mind that we have a democratic government, which means it is constantly changing. So while X government may prioritize funding and prioritize tourism, maybe Y government just doesn't see tourism as a top priority. This makes our government an unreliable one. In a recent statement, the daughter of the late and great Mr. Basley Opandi, Ms. Michaela Pandey, reminded us of our government's motto and mantra for the past 20 years, no matter who's been in office, the mantra has been, we have no money. Ladies and gentlemen, our government is plain and outright telling us that our country has no funding to support itself. Therefore, our tourist sites being privately owned and maintained is a lot safer financially. So let's make the safer choice by putting our country's best interests first and trusting our two sides in this. Thank you. Summary speaker, Kidra Kelly Claremont of El Dorado West Secondary School, please take the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, respected audience, the proposition has failed to present any convincing arguments to show that the private sector should exclusively run tourist sites. Privatizing tourism is often heralded as a strategy to boost economic benefits. However, a closer examination reveals its pitfalls. While private investment can enhance infrastructure and services, it risks exacerbating income inequality by making profit the main objective over local welfare. Moreover, it may be claimed that privatization will ensure efficiency, but at what cost? This so-called efficiency can result in the erosion and dilution of our cultural heritage and the destruction of our natural environment. Furthermore, the loss of income due to alienation and disenchantment of domestic tourism is unacceptable. According to the tourism development company, Trinidadians vacationing in Tobago spent over half a billion TT dollars annually in Tobago. This only through subsidies is this possible. Services like the Inter Island Ferry make it affordable for citizens vaca to vacation in Tobago. In, a, in addition to alienation due to high prices, there can be full blown segregation and prohibition of our citizens from visiting certain sites, which will remain exclusive to foreign tourists. In conclusion, 
a balanced approach involving private and public partnership could foster sustainable development, community empowerment, and economic diversification. By engaging local stakeholders and prioritizing social and environmental sustainability, Trinidad and Tobago can ensure equitable distribution of tourism benefits. So, while privatization may offer short-term benefits, it risks the long-term sustainability and socioeconomic prosperity that we hold. A holistic approach integrating, integrating public and private sectors is vital for maximizing benefits of tourism. Thank you. This concludes the third and final round of our preliminary round one. Judges, your feedback. Great job. Content-wise, I believe this is some of the strongest that we've heard from any of the debates so far. So great job there. And you know, I, I like my flair and my dramatic, but I don't think it was necessarily needed this time. A lot of the arguments were clinical, methodical, they got to the point. I would have liked a few more examples. Uh, we have a lot of examples now of private companies taking over tourist sites and doing really well right here in Trinidad. I would have liked to hear a little bit more about that. Um, and my summary speakers, I need you all to listen to the other side and internalize what they're saying and use it against them. A lot of the summary speakers sounded a little bit rehearsed as well. It's this is your job to make it your own and use not just, again, I said it before, not just what you want to, to, don't make your point based on what you think, but make it to say, my, my point is better than their point. I think so. Uh, equity sentiments, very, very, very good, good debate, right? Um, for the proposition, good, strong use of data, right, all true. So it was a clash of the data versus a bit of the emotion to some extent. And I thought that was really good as the, you know, as the debate went on. So good use of data, good use of, you know, making references to how the elements of tourism is linked to the data. And I thought that was real powerful. I just thought presence could be a little bit stronger. Sometimes when you're presenting data, it's difficult to kind of make the boat happen, the emotion and the presence, right? So it needed to add a little bit of emotion to, to give it a little bit more power, but very good and well presented. On the opposition team, you wanted, you, are, you attacked the emotion around profitability and profit making versus government being involved. And that required a little, bit, a little bit more emotion on your side. You presented as though you presented a lot of facts and data, but the, the argument was really an emotional appeal. And I thought that bringing that emotion would have made the argument a lot more powerful. So whilst a good debate, um, and I do commend uh, both teams for presenting really sound arguments, I felt that the word exclusive was not really a strong focus in the in your arguments. Um, I did get a sense that the opposition team tried to do that, but I think even use of the word exclusive was not even in your delivery. So I think that for me was a, a, a missed um, opportunity to really focus on exactly what the what the what the what the boot was. I do think that you actually gave, gave very good examples, good references, and I liked the attempt to to make the links between profitability and uh, destruction uh, of, the, of the tourism product, the environment in particular. Thank you judges and congratulations to both our teams. We now take another short break and allow our judges to make their final decision on which three teams will be moving forward to the quarterfinals. your point and the results are in. Congratulations once again to all of our six teams and a reminder that the judge's decision is final. Our three schools moving forward to the quarterfinal round of Make Your Point are Marabella South Secondary School, Hillview College and El Dorado West Secondary School. 
Let's give another loud round of applause for the teams who made it this far and now exit the competition with their heads high for their remarkable showing. I would now like to ask a representative from each of our three schools to draw to determine their topic and position. Marabella South Secondary School, Hillview College, and El Dorado West Secondary School. A reminder that the letter P is for proposition and O is for opposition on the number seven to nine. The numbers, of course, signify the next three topics of this competition to be debated. This concludes preliminary round one. Please join us again next Monday at 8 p.m. on CNC3 for preliminary round two to watch these schools debate. Queen's Royal College, Holy Cross College Arima, Bishops Anstey and Trinity College High School East, San Fernando Central Secondary School, Astra Boys College San Fernando, and Holy Faith Convent Coover. See you again. I'm Priyanka Lala, your chairperson, and this was Make Your Point. You're watching CNC3.